Good evening, President Valente, school board members, and Dr. Swanson. It is with great honor that I present to you the academic progress of Josephine Hodgkins Elementary School. But before I begin, I'd like to acknowledge the amazing staff, parents, and students who are here tonight, along with our assistant principal, Nick Corso. At Hodgkins, we are a leader in Mies School, where we practice the seven habits of highly effective people by Dr. Stephen Covey. We have had a ton of positive academic movement at Hodgkins over the last year, and I'm excited to share our action steps that we feel will ensure the sustainability of our academic progress. But first, a little bit more about us. We have a very diverse population at Hodgkins. We have levels one through five with four full day kinder classes, three half day preschools, one full day preschool, and three special needs classrooms. Each and every one of our students is a leader who possesses their own unique genius that we have the honor of helping them discover and unleash. By using habit six, Synergize, we can accomplish great things. This is a short video clip of when we met as a staff to celebrate achieving performance for the very first time at Hodgkins. Each of you has your own why that keeps you here in W. Working on the volume yes. here. With our students in our community. Each and every one of you works so hard. It gives me great pleasure to be able to tell you that this year on the performance framework, you and our students have earned the right to call yourselves a performance. <laughs> The bar, right? We talked about this. This was our goal. Now our goal is here. <laughs> <laughs> we got here, guys. We got here. There's no doubt in my mind how far we can go now. No doubt in my mind that every single one of you got us to that point. So that was a really good day. <laughs> <laughs> As you can see on our school performance framework, we've received over half of the points eligible for academic growth. And although we celebrate the success in the growth area, we know that we need to continue our efforts toward the academic achievement goal for all of our students. Our growth mindset is that we will meet this goal in 2018. So what's in the data? Obviously, we have a lot of data that we can look at on a daily basis. So I'd like to point out just a few areas here on our growth um, data for you. Blue and gray areas designate high growth. So as you can see in English language arts, we had a lot of blue and a lot of gray. So we're really proud of that. However, when you look over to the math section, we're not seeing any blue or gray as of yet, but we are seeing that light orange color. Light orange indicates that we're making progress in the area of growth. Our goal is to continue this upward trend so we will become a sustainable performance school for years to come. Habit two, beginning with the end in mind, is really important to us at Hodgkins. Our commitment card serves as a reminder for our end goal. In 2018, our goal is to not only meet the 50th percentile, but to be well into the range at the 56th. We're going to accomplish this goal by meeting students where they are academically and by continuously analyzing our data. <coughs> habit three, putting first things first, is another really important habit to us. We spent some time at the beginning of the year identifying our own personal why. Because we know that once we're solidified in our why, our what has more impact. So the next few slides will explain our what. The next steps we're taking at Hodgkins to sustain our academic progress. 
As you can see, we're focusing on short cycle monitoring and scoreboards. Scoreboards are a leader in me tool to monitor progress in a specific area. Monitoring is necessary so that progress continues. In addition, we're also going to use the district created performance gauge posters. You have two images on your slide. The image on the right is a classroom scoreboard where students are tracking progress towards the 30 minute reading goal. The image on the left is the building scoreboard where we're tracking the building's progress toward that same goal. <coughs> In this image, those triangles represent each teacher's classroom with their class average for the month. These scoreboards can be found down our specials hallway, so next time you visit us, be sure to check those out. Our building goals are in alignment with the district management pathway plan. Am I done? Wait, wait. <laughs> Five minutes are up. We, Five minutes, thank we, you. We have, we have new technology in here tonight, folks, and uh, the system that runs it all was updated over the weekend, so we're sorry. We're, we're still learning ourselves. <laughs> I get it, emails. They never stop, I get it. At Hodgkins, we're going to continue to level our students in their appropriate levels. Building administration is going to meet monthly with new building staff to the district on a more rigorous schedule. And we're going to train our parents in the seven habits of highly effective families. This is going to help foster a strong culture of academic success for both our students and our parents. And finally, our preschool focus is to retain our students and keep them at Hodgkins as they transition into kindergarten. Our number one priority at Hodgkins is building capacity. So the following are just a few of the action steps that we'll be taking this year to sustain our positive academic growth and achievement. Number one, we're gonna be looking at our balance, uh, we're gonna be looking at our math block to make sure that it's balanced and it's keeping rigorous pace of instruction. We're gonna continue to support those students who've been identified through the beginning of the year data as needing extra academic support. We're utilizing thinking maps to help our students organize their thought process through their learning. And as stated earlier, we're going to train our parents in the seven habits of highly effective families. So earlier in my presentation, I explained how we as a staff established our own personal why. In this video clip, a few of our staff members share their why with you. My why is that I am committed to meeting every student at their level, getting to know their individual and true needs, finding their genius and strength, and celebrating their accomplishments and their leadership abilities. I went through, I went through this district and came back and just the joy that I have um, every day walking in, these kids just, I cannot believe how much energy they give me. Uh, there is never a day I hate coming to work and when these students get something um, it just it makes me feel so good to know that I had a part in that. I teach at Hodgkins. I love the staff. I love the students. I feel like I can make a difference in these kids lives every day. That's why I come to Hodgkins. It's why I teach and it's why I love these kids in this community. The reason I teach in WPS and in our community is because it makes me happy. Um, someone once told me that there's no such thing as a selfless act and I feel like when I see a kid have that moment of, oh, now I understand, um, I become a better person for it and I love sharing that journey with them. Why do I work at Hodgkins? Because I love to support the teachers that are educating these children in this community and because we're a leader in me school, can you think of a better way to get these students prepared for their future. My name is Kelly Cornell. I'm a second year teacher at Hodgkins and I chose Hodgkins Elementary and Westminster Public Schools because of the community I get to serve. They're so appreciative and so supportive and every day I'm greeted by 28 kids who love to see me and are excited to be here and learn. I have a great passion for teaching. I feel like um, I was fortunate enough and blessed enough to be given a gift and the gift is to teach. And with that great gift comes great responsibility. Um, you know, we've been given 
moms and moms and dads are giving us their children, um, their hopes and their dreams, and they're sitting in our classrooms. So we have to do our very best, our absolute best. Um, so it comes with great responsibility, but it also comes with great joy um, and satisfaction with the things that we can do with our students. I've been teaching in Westminster for 22 years. I've taught thousands of students. Every day I'm amazed by their genius, and I have the privilege of teaching them art and unleashing their creative spirit. Thank you for allowing me to share Hodgkins with you. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you. The first question, what is the proper pronunciation of your last name? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I was going to say it the way I say it to the kids. It's Swykowski. Swykowski. So Swykowski. 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 Okay. Everybody, Swykowski. All right. <laughs> Thank Formerly you. known as Velasquez. <laughs> All right, gentlemen, what questions do you have? One quick question, one, and it's something that I've noticed every time I've been in the hallways at Hodgkins, as well as when we do the, um, the showcase. Um, what do you do, you and your staff, to, to encourage your students to have ownership of their work? Because every time we're at the showcase, your students are the ones grabbing people and bringing them in to show them their, their portfolios. and. Um, and even when you're walking in the hallways, I feel like every student recognizes that. And so that's something I think that's somewhat unique to, to your school and what you're doing, but what's happening? So for us, uh, there's, leader there's leadership in two different areas, for your academics and as well as just your own character. So as far as academics are concerned, every student, pre-K through level five, including our centers, all have their own leadership notebooks. So if you come to our building, make sure you call it a leadership notebook, because when you ask them for their data notebook, they have no idea what you're talking about even though it's the same thing. Um, and so within that leadership notebook, they goal set. They also, action, they also have their action steps for their goal because we know you have to have a plan. It's not enough just to have a goal, otherwise it's just a dream. Um, and then as well as just collecting any type of um, feedback that they have for themselves on leadership roles. So like I said earlier, um, we believe that every student has genius. And so it's really up to us to help them um, unleash that, whatever that might look like. Some of us are great speakers. Some of us are not such great speakers. Some of us can hold a door like nobody's business. And so we really just um, use those strengths. We build on strengths rather than looking at deficiencies. And so that's what I believe um, our students have ownership in everything and why they're not afraid to talk to adults. They're actually really excited. They look forward to seeing you all in October um, just to share everything with you, their journey, their accomplishments, and their next steps on what they're working on. Gentlemen, other questions? I have more. Um, <laughs> can you, one of the things that you highlighted, and we don't have to go back to the slide, but you said that you're going to be training families on the seven, what is it, seven habits of effective right, families? Right, seven habits of highly effective highly families. Effective. Right, so it's similar to the seven ha habits of highly effective people. So when we began this journey in Leader and Me, it was important that as a staff, you have to, you have to um, live the seven habits yourself. Otherwise, you can't teach that to any other human being, whether they're four feet tall or six feet tall. Um, and so as a staff, we really needed to go through that training ourselves. And then after that training, then we teach those skills um, through the Leader and Me lens. Uh, it's the seven habits of highly effective families is similar but more in that family lens rather than a school and rather than just as a personal adult. So are you recruiting family members to come in to do this? Or? Correct. So what we, what we will have to do is have one trainer, one staff trainer that can be trained in the habits especially for families to train our parents and we already have a really strong parent base thanks to our community, community liaison Claudia. Um, and so we're going to just build off of that, and we just continue to add to that group every year. And because Claudia is bilingual, it'll be in Spanish and English. I noticed one of your goals was also um, math blocks. Right. Can you talk a little bit about that? Right. So um, we really, we recognize we need to look at those math scores and just not only look at them, but really action steps 
how are we going to have that academic growth that we've seen so largely in our English language arts data? And so we really need to look at going back to the basics. So just that basic instructional block, what does that look like? Making sure we have all of the components um, and not just having them, but doing them really well. The next step after having the appropriate components is that we need to make sure that we're identifying those academic gaps and knowing how to fill them, which means our depth of knowledge needs to be deeper just as math teachers. And so we're working on that. We'll work with consultants such as Art Drotar to help us with our instruction as well. And again, analyzing that data on a regular basis, not waiting for the semester test to tell us, not waiting for PARC to tell us. Other questions? Dr. Swanson, tell us about the easel. I'll bet, uh, I'll bet Ms. Swykowski can tell us too. Uh, you'll be seeing these in schools uh, beginning this coming month in October, right, Jenny? Um, they look like speedometers to some extent, but we're calling them performance uh, gauges. And it's going to track our progress. If you've ever been to a fundraiser and you have a thermometer, and you know, as people uh, become closer and closer to the goal, to meeting the goal, you'll see the thermometer go up. That's how these are going to look throughout the year. And they'll be updated monthly based on our um, assessment data um, that we have inside the school. So every school will have one, so look for them. Great. I just have a couple comments. Um, I want to talk about growth. You mentioned Claudia. In 2012, Claudia was here as a parent with a PTA uh, in another school in our district. At the time, uh, Claudia had to have an English language interpreter. She had very little handle on spoken English. Since then, her involvement, she has grown and is a remarkable liaison in our school district. You are blessed to have her in Hodgkins this year. Um, you would never know that English is her second language. Uh, that's some pretty impressive growth. And the other growth I want to talk about is at the podium, because at the same time I met Claudia, I met a young kindergarten teacher named Ms. Velasquez up at Mesa Elementary. When they were hosting, I was invited uh, by super um, all things Mesa, Lori Rinkoff, uh, the biggest cheerleader in our school district, to a parent night because I'd asked the question about our competency system, or as it was known at the time, standards based. And what we're doing now is even different from that. And I said, I don't get it. So. She invited me up and said, okay, this is Ms. Velasquez, and she's one of our kindergarten teachers, and because as a school board member, I can actually, I'm allowed legally to see student records, et cetera. She said, you're not going into the presentation room down the hall. She's gonna show you what a teacher sees on the screen. And it was remarkable and eye-opening to see how the systems, how the tracking worked. I looked at uh, the one record and I said, this student seems to be doing very well here, but there's a big drop off. I said, is this student dyslexic? And she said, you just got it. And it was so obvious to somebody looking from the outside, but watching the growth from somebody who was um, a young teacher at the time in five years time to be a remarkable principal leading a performance school with a fantastic staff, well done. Keep it up. Thank you. Gro growth is beyond just um, how students do on tests. It's how people achieve throughout their careers and throughout their lives. So keep it up, both of you and everybody else in your systems. Thank you. I that was just, you filled my cup. Thank you so much. But this is, this is my district. This is my community. I could not imagine being anywhere else. Um, and it's just, it's an honor. Every single day, it's an honor. Thank you. Thank you.